Hi everyone, Sean here. Today I want to talk about some changes that Sony's made recently on the PlayStation Network and how those affect older consoles, especially the PSP. They've made some changes that make it much more difficult to use these older systems on the PlayStation Network. In particular, what they've done is your password will no longer work. So what you have to do is you have to go into the Sony website log into your account, and then create a device-specific password for your PSP or your Vita or your PlayStation 3. So you go into your account settings, and then in account settings, you go to security. Security will take you to a different page. And on that different page, if you scroll down, you'll have an option to generate or manage device setup passwords. So when you set up a device specific password, um, there, this will list all of the passwords that you've um, already generated, but you won't be able to see them. All you can do is generate a new one. So you click the button to generate a new password, and then it'll give you a password on screen. Um, but you, there's no way to get back to this password, so you have to capture it at this point and then you use that password to log in to the PlayStation Network on your PSP or your Vita or your PlayStation 3. Each one will need its own unique device setup password. Once you've done that, um, then you're able to get back on the PlayStation Network and browse. But I found that in my systems, I had to deactivate and reactivate my systems before I would be able to successfully download anything. So that gets you back on the PlayStation Network. But what if you want to buy something on the PlayStation Network? Then there are more hurdles you have to jump through. So you're going to need to add funds to your wallet, either on the website or on the mobile app or on um, website, mobile app, or um, on a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, you can actually add funds to your wallet on those devices, but you won't be able to add any funds to the wallet on your PlayStation 3 anymore or your PS Vita or your PSP. Once funds are in your wallet, then you'll be able to purchase things, but you can't purchase anything on the PSP itself. You have to go and make your purchases on either the PS3 store or the PS Vita store. Now, depending on what it is you're trying to purchase, you'll need one device or the other. The PS3 has very few PSP games left that are available for purchase. It has a small selection of PS1 games that can still be purchased, and a few dozen PSP games if you search them out. Um, almost all of the minis are gone, all of the other stuff is gone, but what it does have that the Vita doesn't have access to are the themes. So if you want to go looking for themes, you'll need to do that on a PlayStation 3. If you're looking for games or um, PS1 classics or PlayStation minis, the best place to find those is on the Vita store. On the Vita store, you can find those in the classic section and you just navigate through and find the title you're looking for or you can use search because if something's not in the list you might still be able to find it by doing a search then once you've made your purchase on one of those other consoles then you can go to the PSP and pull that file down from your download list and even that's a little squirrely lately. I've noticed that when I buy something new, instead of going at the top of my download list, it goes at the bottom of my download list under like a thousand other purchases since the PlayStation Network launched. So it's a lot of scrolling. Um, another thing that might work is to go into search on the PSP, find the title you purchased on the other platform and download it from that items page. Search doesn't always work on the PSP. Some days it works, some days it doesn't. The service has gotten really temperamental lately. But once you find it, either in the store or in your download list, then you can download it directly from your console. Assuming you're able to get your console on Wi-Fi. 
Getting a PSP on Wi-Fi in 2022 is a whole separate set of challenges that I may make another video on because I think the approach I have to solving that problem is a little different than what most people do. Anyway, here we go. So now that we have a device password, let's get this thing logged into the PlayStation Store. I've already typed in my device password. You don't need to see me fumble through the on-screen keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and select automatic sign-in to make sure that um, that password is saved and I don't have to type it in again. So let's go now and see if we can sign into the store. Yes, we can sign into the store as minimally functional as the store is now. Uh, but before I can actually buy anything or download any of my previous purchases, I'm going to go ahead and deactivate and reactivate this system to make sure it's correctly activated on my account. So I'm going into the XMB under the account options and I'm going to go down to system activation. In system activation, there are two choices, game and video and comics. So I'm going to go through both of those, and I will deactivate this system. Deactivation complete. I'll do the same for games, or for uh, videos. Now, after you've deactivated your system, sometimes a reactivation won't work right away. You'll get errors, different error codes. And I had to retry on some of my systems for up to an hour before I was able to successfully reactivate them. Let's see if I run into that here. So I'm going to go back into system activation, and I'll start with game. And let's activate the system for game content. You may also sometimes get an error during activation that says you have to deactivate one of your zero activated systems to get back into the PlayStation Network. That can happen if your activation slots are consumed by PlayStation Vitas or PSTVs. Uh, or sometimes people are just getting this error at random. The only way I've found to consistently get around it is to go back into my PlayStation Network account and deactivate all of my systems and start over. You only get to do this once every six months, so use this option sparingly and uh, it's a last resort, scorched earth. Okay, so this one reactivated successfully. Let's go back into video and activate the system for video. I have some video purchases on my PlayStation Network account, and I like to still use them sometimes. I also still have a few comics from back in the day when the PlayStation Network had a comic store. If you want to see some of those old comics, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video showing you know the handful of old comics I have that still work. Okay, now that my system has been activated, I can go into account management again. And from account management, I can go to my transaction management. And in transaction management, I can get to my download list. Going in through the download list is much more reliable than going in through the main store. The main store I find sometimes crashes. Um, and will just kick me out or my PSP will shut off for some reason. But if I go in through um, the download list, 
and I just find whatever it was I wanted to download, then I can you know, go back in and successfully download it. So let's see if this theme will activate. Activation successful and downloading. Okay, so I'm reactivated. I'm able to successfully download content off of the PlayStation Network again. And let's see what it's like to buy something new. When I go into the PlayStation Network to buy something new, uh, I'm going to start with the store on the PSP, even though I can't actually buy anything here. So let's get logged into the store. And it works. I want to find, let's try a PS1 classic that I don't already own. So I'll go to search and hope that search is working today. Yes, search is working today. Let's see, what do I not already own? Um, do I have Mega Man X4? Maybe. Do I have this one? I don't, okay. $5.99, this will do. See, when I try to purchase it here, I get an error. So what I have to do is I have to reach for my PlayStation Vita and make the purchase over there. Let's hope this title is available in the PlayStation Vita version of the store. My only options are the PlayStation Vita version of the store or the PlayStation 3 version of the store. If it's not available in one of those two storefronts, I'm not going to be able to buy it. So, PSP aside, let's get the Vita going. And we want Starfighter. And there it is, Shooter. Okay, the Buy Now option is available. And I have already added funds to my wallet. Because I can't add funds to my wallet here, I can't use a credit card here. But if I have funds in my PSN wallet, then I am able to make purchases here. Uh, do I want to broadcast this on social media? Let's say no. Okay, it's downloading on the Vita. Let's go get that downloaded on the PSP. I think I have to exit the store, get that to refresh. And I will just do the same search that brought me there last time. Here it is, Shooter. 
Okay, and now it's already been purchased. I have the little red store icon overlay. And instead of a buy and add to cart, I have download. So let's just grab that. Activated and downloading. Now, fortunately, this is a small game. It's only going to take uh, three minutes to download, probably another three minutes to install, and then I'll be able to play it. On the PlayStation Portable, you can't background download content. You have to just sit and wait for it. So you want to make sure your PlayStation Portable doesn't go to sleep in the middle of a download. So if this were a larger file, I would be keeping it plugged in and I would be checking on it periodically to make sure it was still alive. It's unfortunate that we can't download content and transfer it from a PlayStation 3 anymore. That was one of the things they broke in the May updates in 2022. Um, what people used to be able to do is download the content on the PlayStation 3, plug the PSP in over USB, and transfer it. So the PS3 would have high-speed network access um, and then your USB speeds to do the transfer. The PlayStation Portable, since we now have to download directly, only supports um, Wi-Fi 802.11b with a maximum theoretical bandwidth of 11 megabits a second. In reality, it's more like five or six on a good day. So that's why a tiny little 80 megabyte file is going to take us about 10 minutes to download and install. So you can see if you bought a two gigabyte game like Persona 3 or something, it's going to take some time. Okay, we've finished downloading the package from Sony's servers. Now we have to install the game. So it's unpacking the package into the game directory on the PlayStation's memory stick. Looks like this will take slightly less time than downloading the file. Oh, cannot let it go to sleep. Download complete, install complete. Let's exit out of the PlayStation Store and see if the game works. There it is at the top of the list in my memory card. Boot logo. And we're in. So that is the end and process you have to go through if you want to buy content for your PlayStation Portable from the PlayStation Network as of you know May of 2022. They have made it a little extra challenging but it is still technically possible, even if it's not really practical. And thanks for watching. I hope you found something useful in this. I know the PlayStation Network has gotten really frustrating lately, and I'm pretty certain that's deliberate on Sony's part. I think they'd really rather no one use the older consoles. I don't think they understand why we care about the older consoles, but we do, and I'll keep using it as long as I can find a way to make it work. Anyway, bye for now.